Uh, I know sometimes you read car magazine stories and you might think that, you know, are they kind of making it up a little bit? Were they really in that much danger? Was it really that difficult? That was, without question, the most difficult, dangerous, stressful thing I have ever done in a motor car. We've got a big Toyota Fortuna four-wheel drive sport car with us. The only way the Mini was going to make it through the rockfall section uh, was to uh, rope the two cars together. So we had a cable, um, but even so, the Mini was absolutely surfing on its belly through rocks and mud and through ruts and everything else. And what kind of concentrates the mind is the fact that on your right hand side there is the square root of nothing for thousands and thousands of feet. Unfortunately, the clouds come in were, as I said before, 3,700 metres, I think about 12,200 feet. So this is a pretty common occurrence. Um, but I know what's down there and what's down there is literally nothing. Fortunately, we seem to have made it through. The car seems absolutely fine. Um, haven't punctured the fuel tank. All the body works intact. Um, we're now just waiting to clear this final bit of difficult stretch and hopefully we can finally, after two days of traffic jams, get on the road to Leigh and to Cardong Lo. So what are we learning about the Mini Cooper convertible on Indian roads? Well, I kind of appreciate that these observations probably aren't enormously relevant to those of you who don't regularly drive in Indian cities uh, or above 18,000 feet. I've been enormously impressed uh, by this car. It is just a standard Cooper uh, and the engine has just enough power for overtaking, even at 4,000 meters, 12,000 feet and above. And you really do need to overtake on these roads. Otherwise you risk getting stuck behind these ancient Indian cargo trucks that just belch thick black clouds of acrid soot back at you. You really don't want to get stuck behind them. Um, this car comes with the automatic gearbox, which is standard in the Indian market. It's a real godsend when you're driving in these hugely congested uh, Indian cities. It's not the most predictable or smoothest of changes, but what it does do on these long, long climbs we've been doing is to hold on to the gear uh, really well and not uh, change up, and it keeps you in the power band pretty nicely. Uh, the steering's great, lots of feel, and the thing that I'm most impressed with is the brakes. We've been doing some long, long descents uh, already. You can easily lose two kilometers in vertical altitude in the space of 20 kilometers on the road. Um, and the brakes don't fade at all. They never go off loads and loads of feel just what you want. You also, on these hairpins we're driving through now, very often meet one of those cargo trucks coming in the opposite direction. That's why you blow your horn going around every corner. And there have been a few occasions when I've really tested the brakes, really had to stamp on them, uh, and they've always come through. Very, very impressive. So we're finally here at the Cardong La Pass, uh, and the question is, is it really worth it? I mean, I've been wanting to come to this place for as long as I've known about it, so you'd expect me to say yes. But was it worth the thousand mile drive up from Delhi, which took us five days on crazy Indian roads with crazy Indian driving? Is it worth the health risks that come with being at this extreme altitude? Things like pulmonary edema and cerebral edema and other things that you really don't want to get. Was it worth the risks that we had to face from floods and from landslides and from having to drive at night? through basically unmarked roads that ran straight through the desert and driving over other 5,000 meter plus passes late at night. And the things that we had to do this mini to get it through as well, dragging on its belly through roads that had been pretty much destroyed by landslides and digging it out of deep sands. Well, of course it was worth it. Just look at the things. 